Anyway, enough of these shenanigans. It's time to continue the normally open, normally closed content I did last week. So let's stand by for some actual electrical content involving normally open, normally closed. Hold on. It's going to be a rough ride for you, not for me. So if you watch the normally open, normally closed content last week, this is a continuation of that, yeah? If you're watching it, if you're watching this now and you don't know what I'm on about, keep an eye on my YouTube because this will be one YouTube video. And if you didn't see that normally open, closed, normally open or closed content, then you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> but let's go over some normally open, normally closed in real life. So let's get some power set up and just do a little recap on what normally open, normally closed means. So what we've got here is we've got a 24 volt power supply there that's wired up. And these are my motor training rigs. They offer that you can train with motors on here. But here we've got a selection of, we've got a contactor and we can use the auxiliary block on that if we wish. We've got a timer of some sort on each one, which don't really matter. And we've got a couple of relays. We're just going to use this relay and we're going to use the push button stage here. So I'm going to wire these up now so that one's normally open and one's normally closed. We're going to use a normally open, normally closed button. All of these buttons are wired to these cable looms here so that I can mess around with it. So let's, let's just wire something up normally open, normally closed. Where we're at so far, yeah. I've got a 24 volt supply. It's common down and each one of the rigs has got pulse 24 volts and neutral at each one. So let's do the same thing. The rigs in this section are identical and the push button stations are identical. So on this one, you'll see the green light is lit. That is because the green light indicates the rig is getting voltage. And over here, you'll see the green light is lit because it indicates the rig is getting voltage. What I've done is I've took 24 volts through this red push button to this lamp. And on this one, I've took 24 volts through this green push button to this lamp. So now if I come to the normally closed side, because the power is going through the button, which is normally closed, the lamp is lighting. When I press the push button, it opens it and the lamp is going off. So release it, normally closed is energizing. I press it, it goes to its non-normal state, which is open, and the lamp goes off. The green light is staying lit because it indicates this power to the rig. That is basically push to break and lose the light. On this side, when I press the button, the button is normally open, so no power is getting through. When I press it, the lamp is coming on. It's not as bright as the one, but the lamp is coming on. Let go. It closed, It opens again, so the lamp goes off. Press it, and it's on. So that's effectively press to energise. So the action of this one is press and you de-energise. The action of this one is press and you energise. Normally open and normally closed in action. Now, I know you're thinking, you're thinking, he's come in the office this morning when it's cooler, then he's took his hoodie off, and now the continuity of these shots is ruined. Well, you'd be right. <laughs> now, I know you're thinking electrically, you're thinking, so fucking what? Like, if you want a normally open push button, use that. If you want a normally closed push button, use that. But it goes loads deeper, because we can use contactors and stuff like that. So, there's a massive difference between normally open and normally closed. And that difference is that one of them is fail-safe. One of them is much better at being fail-safe. There's so many configurations you do normally open, normally closed in. I don't even know where this video is going, but we're going to start doing some stuff. So let's just look at one of those options on these rigs now, just to show you how you can get caught out. At the minute, that green light is on to tell you that there's power to the rig. And the red light is on because the button's not being pressed, which is fantastic. On this one, the green light is on to tell you there's power going to the rig. And the red light is not on, because the button is not being pressed, but it comes when I press it. Fantastic. The question is, if we take away the green lights, so on this one, you'll now see the green light's not lit because I've disconnected it, but when I press the button, the light goes off. So when I press the button, the light still functions as it should. And on the green one, you'll see the light is not lit because I've disconnected it, but when I press the button, nothing happens. <laughs> nothing happens because I've accidentally disconnected the green lamp here. But if I place that back into the Wago, one-handed, which was always going to be a bad idea, now it functions. Well, that is a problem because that is not fail-safe. So generally, generally, normally closed is more reliable. You get more positive feedback. I'll show that in a second. And normally open is unreliable because look, looking from up here right now, I can tell you that this rig has power. I can't tell you if this button works, but I can tell you the rig has power and the button is working in one direction because the power is flowing through it to the lamp. And when I press the lamp, it goes off. So I've got some indication that it's going to function the way I intended. The intended way being that when I press the button, the light goes off. On this one, where the intended function is when I press the button, the light comes on, I'm in the dark. I don't know if it's got power because there is nothing to indicate that. 
because it is not a normally closed contact. It's not fell safe. So when I press this, will it come on? Yes, it will. But I had no way of knowing that. And that's a very important distinction between normally open and normally closed. So on this one, I know the circuit is probably functioning. On this one, I have no idea if it's functioning. If I come over here and turn the power supply off and I go back, when the power supply dies, as you'll see it die in a second. In fact, if I press that a few times, it'll probably kill it. There you go, it's dying off. So now I know this probably won't work because this bulb's not lit. Either the bulb's faulty or the button's faulty, but it looks to me like the power's off. But I get some indication because this should be lit. And on this one, it's not lit. And I'm like, why is this not working? I have no idea that the power is just actually turned off. So that's why you normally close, normally open. Gives you some feedback. So adding to that, I've got these vessels now, these silos look, yeah? So I've got two silos. I've got a silo here and a silo there. They're exactly the same. They've got three doors on them, indicated by the circuits with doors, yeah? The difference is, on the doors on this one, I've got normally open switches. And on the doors on this one, I've got normally closed switches. Then I've got a positive power supply from a control, and I've got a lamp. So let's see how it affects the safety system of all these doors being shut so it's okay to run on a normally open switch. So on this side drawing, you can screenshot that if you want and look at it after, I take the positive feed to each switch to provide a common feed. And on the normally open, the switch is open when the doors are shut properly. We'll have to take a common feed to each side and then have to take a feed off the other sides, as in like this, so that the positive can get through any one of these if they're not right. And then it's okay when it's off. So when the lamp is not lit, all these doors are shut properly. You'll find that's insane because if all these doors are shut properly, the power's on, that lamp will go off when it's healthy, when all the doors are shut. But that lamp will always go off when the power goes off. So when the power goes off, you have no indication if the power's off all the doors are shut properly. It's a shit system because normally open is never used on safety critical systems. Just pull that back so you can screenshot it and look at it for yourself later. Also, if this door was not shut properly, hence the switch is shut, hence the lamp is coming on so you know not to do it. If the wire fell out this side like that, it would appear to be healthy even though the door is not shut, because it is not fail safe because it's a normally open system. Now, on a normally closed system, you can already see how much easier it is when you put them side by side. You take your positive feed out through your first switch, through your second switch, through your third switch to your lamp. Your lamp is lit when they're all healthy. It looks like this. So if the wire gets broken, the lamp will not come on. If any of the switches get broken, the lamp will not come on. If the power's not there, the lamp will not come on. It is fail safe because if the doors are open, the power's missing, or the cables are broken, it won't get the okay on the lamp or the PLC input. And that is why, screenshot time kids, we use normally closed on safety systems. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you through the most used option of normally open and normally closed buttons. I did that the wrong way. That's normally closed, that's normally open. And a contactor like this, which has got one normally open contact and just there, look. And there's a reason for that. It's because it's most commonly used in a doll starter. So first of all, I'm gonna show you how this contactor would run a motor if we did what's called push to run. Ah, yeah, press the button and the contactor runs. Like you might find on, for example, a roller shutter door. So let's wire that one up and show you that example of a push to run. So if you Google push to run motor circuit, you'll get an email, you'll get a picture of some sort. I'll probably add one in if it's on YouTube, but. But I've made now it's called a push to run. I've taken my voltage source, my neutrals are all common out. I've taken my live through my green button and then to my contactor. And you'll see that when I press the green button, the contactor pulls in and the lamp comes on to indicate it's running. As soon as I let go, the contactor falls out, the motor would stop because the lamp's indicating the motor. And now it's not running, which is great. So I've made a motor control. So my little tiny circuit can control this big contactor that can control a big pump. So off we go. There you go, lock. 
I'm running a pump whenever I want or a roller shutter door or anything with a motor on by simply pressing this button. And this motor could be as big as a house. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I can still control it. The problem with push to run is, if you've got a pump, you're not gonna stand there and hold the button, are you? Or if you've got, I don't know, an inflator for a bouncy castle, you're not gonna stand there and hold the button. Some things require what they call manually dependent control, i.e. someone's gotta stand there and push the button. Roller shutter doors are a prime example of this because you are acting as the safety circuit. You stand near the door and you press down and the roller shutter comes down and if you see anything get in the way of the door, you let go of the button and it stops. Obviously, if Piers Morgan's in the weather door, you keep your finger on the button and crush that motherfucker. But generally, if someone's going in the door, you see it and you stop it. And simply by letting go, you stop the movement, which is fine. So now I've made some small wine changes. I've actually wired it wrong so you can't work. I've wired it in a funny way so you can't work it out from this video, but it'll show the point, yeah? The contactor is now out. You can see it's not in. It's sticking in because I've wired it wrong so you can't copy it from the drawing. But what we have now is, if we come over here, if we press go, the contact pulls in and the light comes on because the motor is now running. And when we press stop, the whole system stops. So now, if you're running the pump or an inflate for a bounce castle, you come along, you press start. And then when you're finished, you press stop. And that holds the contactor in. It's called a direct online starter while your process is running. So if I press that now, that'll hold in until I tell it otherwise. Now, we could apply another little bit of normally open, normally close to this to make it more healthy. Because at the minute, the motor's running when this contact's pulled in, but there's an overload next to it, look. And this overload, if the motor overloads, it'll trip. Trip itself off like that. But at the moment, let's start it. And let's come over here and trip the motor, because the motor's rattling around getting too hot. And it trips off. The problem is, the power's stayed onto the motor. Even though the power's gone, the actual free phase is gone, the control circuit stayed in and the lamp is telling us that the motor is running but in fact it wouldn't be so we need to now interlink this so that when this trips it takes the control out so the light doesn't indicate running because at the minute there's no power but the control's still in so we think the pump's running when it's not could be particularly dangerous on a pump so we need to do something with these here these are the auxiliary blocks for the overload so now i've done some jiggery poke lock when i press green contactor pulls in when I press stop, contactor falls out. When I press green, contactor pulls in. But if the overload trips, it trips off the contactor because there's no power to run it anyway. And the lamp doesn't light anymore. Brilliant, eh? So now we've got everything, haven't we? In fact, I've even put a trip light here, look. So that indicates the motor's tripped. And when you reset the lamp, the trip lamp goes off. So let's watch the entire thing. Start the motor, motor's running. Stop the motor, motor stopped. Start the motor, but the motor trips. We lose the running light and we gain a trip light. So now on the little control panel we'd have, we'd have a full on vision indication of what's going off. Before you even undo the door, you know the motor's tripped. And do you know what I'm gonna do now? I'm not gonna tell you any that's done because fuck you, <laughs> you'll nick my job. No, not really. I'm not gonna tell you any it's done. I'm not gonna show you how to wire it piece by piece because that wouldn't achieve anything. If I just told you how to wire it so you could copy what I do, you'd never get anywhere. What I'm gonna do is, on the, not on this video, but on the YouTube, I'm gonna put some drawings up, and I'm gonna direct you to the Moller Motor Manual. Just Google the Moller Motor Manual. The Moller Motor Manual is an excellent resource, and it shows you how to wire all different types of motors in the right way, and how you stop and start lock. And I'm not just gonna show you how to do it, because you wanna get the Moller Motor Manual, you wanna look how motors are wired, and you wanna get it in your head because me just showing you will achieve me showing you one thing. Reading the Moller Motor Manual and understanding how normally open and normally closed contacts are using control systems, normally closed, normally open as we went into there for safety switches and stuff like that, will tell you more. So sorry if you've watched this video open to find out exactly how to do it. I'm not gonna tell you, sorry, but when you've worked out, when you understand the difference between this mess and this mess compared to this way of properly doing it, then you'll know how to work with motors and control systems, yeah? When you understand the difference between these two, and when you understand how these normally open and close contacts and this normally open contact and these normally open and normally close push buttons interact with each other with this coil, then you will be as good as me. You'll be a big player like I am, motherfucker. But yeah, it won't help me to tell you, 
what will help is if you find the resources you need to find out. So I'll give you a secret. The secret is, this is wired wrong, and I'll show you why. I've wired it wrong so you can't copy it, but let me show you some problems with it that you haven't noticed. So, watch this. Turn it on so it's not tripped. Yeah, press start, contact comes in. Press stop, contact goes off. The stop one's down now, but the contact, can, it can still pull. So even though this stop is pushed in, yeah, you can still push to run it. Can you imagine if that was in a real site and someone had pressed the emergency stop, but some idiot pressed the green button and the motor started? That's wrong. So that is wrong. I deliberately wired it wrong so you can't copy the wiring, but if you wired it properly, once you press the E stop, this would not work. So that's part of the challenge is to test it. And you have to test it by testing the start works, the stop works, the E stop works properly. Because this, if you put it in someone's house, or if you put it in a, in a, in a pump, that would be an absolute fucking death trap. So yeah. That's why you need to know. So here's my little secret. Whenever I'm designing control systems, I don't design them myself. What I do is I work out what I want to do. I want to do a push to run with an overload and a fucking e-stop and all that shit. I go in the Marlon Motor Manual and I pick the assembled parts of those recognised control circuits and I assemble them to do what I want. Then I get a trial and tested method that you won't get silly stop buttons like that, if that makes sense. Yeah, I don't draw my own drawings. The secret to that is the stop button cuts all the power no matter what. But there's different ways of doing it. But yeah, I always take it from a known reference source. Then if ever, anyone ever tells me I've done it wrong, I simply revert them to my reference I've made, which is always the Moller Motor Manual. I hope that makes sense. If anyone's got any questions, I'll take them. But that'll be a YouTube video with more bits in. Uh, but I've got to go now, so I've got to go on replace this fuse board for your mum's dildo.